JDAMs are GPS INS guided bombs which are super easy to use and are very very precise. In this video I'll help you pick them up and start checking. Let's go! First of course is the control setup, which we only need one thing this time. That's as long as you already have the lightning targeting pod controls configured, which if you don't, make sure to watch my guide on it linked on the top right side of your screen right now and in the description. Otherwise, all we need is the WPN REL button depress, which is the big red button on your stick which releases the bombs. And here we are in Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. We'll arm with some JDAMs and then end out to Groom Lake Air Base, where we will do some practice drops. Looking at the rearming screen, JDAMs can only be mounted on stations 3 and 7. And the options we can fit on each of these stations are 1 times 500 pound GBU 38, 2 times 500 pound GBU 38s, 1 times 2000 pound GBU 31 V1 and one time 2000 pound GPU 31 V3 penetrator. For this first demonstration, I'm gonna take two times 500 pound GPU 38s on each of these stations. Of course, a lightning targeting pod on station five right, and I'll add some unrelated fillings to the rest of the stations. Request rearming. Copy. Rearming complete. Alright, cool. And now for the startup. Don't forget to give power to the lightning targeting pod through the right hard point. Nose will steering on and I can start taxing. So, because JDAMs are GPS INS guided bombs, just like our jet, they need to be aligned. To start the JDAM alignment, go into air to ground mode, set master arm to on, and on the JDAM SMS page, press power on on the top right side. This will start a countdown going from A10 to A03. From A03, it will go to RDY or ready, and this whole process takes about two minutes. Because of those two minutes, you must remember to power on your JDAMs before reaching the target point. A03 with a line indicated at the bottom. And ready, now we can deploy these JDAMs. And with the JDAMs aligned, I need to explain to you a little quirk with the targeting pod, which is very important when dropping these JDAMs. Because of the way the targeting pod works, it can sometimes look through targets. And I don't mean some kind of x-ray vision. What I mean is, let's say you want to shack this tank and you're this F-16 flying right here. If you aim at the very top of the tank, right here you can see that I'm aiming at it, the targeting pod isn't actually aiming at it or looking at it. It's looking through it with a direct line to the ground. So. If I were to drop the JDAM right now, it will land right here. And the tank will not be damaged. The reason for that is that the targeting pod is aiming at a coordinate. This tank is not part of the ground, it's on top of it. So it's looking through it at the coordinate behind it, if that makes sense. What you want to do instead to resolve it is aim at the wheels of the target or the bottom of the target or kind of draw that direct line to the ground in your mind and that will give you much better results when i drop a jdam now it will fall like that on top of the target and kill it and not fly above it and miss it just because the tgp was aiming at these coordinates so let's take a look at this jdam sms page JDAMs can be dropped in two modes, the first one being pre and the second being viz. We'll start with pre mode which is probably what you're usually gonna use. In pre mode we use any kind of SPI or sensor point of interest to tell the JDAM where to go. That can be a SPI from the TGP, from a waypoint, 
from the air to ground radar or any other kind of SPI. Next, we'll look at this three and seven buttons right here. When you press on either of them, it will switch the station where the next bomb is gonna drop from. You can also change that by pressing the nose wheel steering button. Now let's go to the more advanced options by pressing control right here. And the first one we'll take a look at is impact angle. With JDAMs, you can tell them what impact angle you want them to impact the target at. The default is 60 and you can change it to anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees. And as far as my testing went, impact azimuth and impact velocity seem to not really do anything in DCS yet. Next is profile, which with JDAMs you have up to four different profiles. And that basically lets you save four different types of settings. So you don't have to change everything each time you want to drop a bomb with a different parameter. As an example, for profile one, I will change the impact angle to 45 degrees, then press profile two, and you'll see that profile two is still on that default 60 impact angle. If I go all the way back to profile one, it is what I set it to, which is 45 degrees impact angle. Next is arming delay, which unlike laser guided bombs, is how much time it's gonna take the bomb to arm itself after leaving the jet. It's not how much time it's gonna take it to explode after hitting the ground. I never change it from four, but you can change it to all kinds of settings until it goes back to four. Next is some fusing options and the default one is air, but none of them actually change anything as of right now because we don't have what's called a JPF or a joint programmable fuse. As the name suggests, that's what lets the bomb's fuse be programmable. So in most scenarios, you'll keep it in air unless you're dropping penetrators where for some reason you should put it into ground and fuse delay of zero. That will give you the best penetration with the GBU-31 V3 penetrator. Because we don't have that JPF as I mentioned, you can change it but it's still gonna explode as soon as it touches the ground. The same is true for ground delay which lets you put a massive delay on the bombs so they can go into the ground and be there for a while before exploding, starting from quarter of an hour going all the way up to 24 hours. Again, until we get that JPF, this is not functional in DCS yet. I'll bring it back to air, and as I said, there's no real reason to change it unless you're dropping the penetrator version of those JDAMs, which then it should be set to ground fuse and no fuse delay. And we can get out of control. Right here in the center, it tells you all the different parameters that she set for the bomb. Honestly, we only changed the impact angle to 45 degrees, which is really the only thing that's functional right now until we get that JPF. You'll see that if I change to profile two, again, it will go to that default 60 degrees impact angle. Next, let's take a look at the HUD symbology. Very similarly to the GBU-24 of the last video, JDAMs have a drop zone rather than a drop point, which means as long as you drop while this arrow or carrot is inside this zone, your bomb is gonna hit. Now, if you do go for steeper impact angles, like 70, 80, 90, you need to get deeper into that zone for it to actually be able to get to that impact angle. Next is the ASL or the azimuth steering line going through the entirety of the HUD. What you need to do with it is basically just place your velocity vector so that line goes directly through the middle of it which means you're flying directly into that drop zone. JDAMs can actually do a little bit of turning so it's not terrible if you are not exactly on the ASL but don't go crazy with it. Next is this horizontal line that's on the ASL, which as soon as we get to eight seconds before getting into the drop zone, th this line will start dropping until it hits the horizon. Because JDAMs are dropped in this zone and not on a specific point, you don't have to drop it as soon as this line gets to the horizon. You can really drop the bomb at any point in this zone. And before heading towards those drops, I just remembered that I actually wanted the profile 2 impact angle to be 90 degrees and not 60, so I'll just set it, control, and go back to 1. So 145 degrees to 90 degrees, and going back to 1. So let's go in for the first drop. I'll put the TGP screen on the left MFD. And for this first drop, I'm going to take advantage of the JDAMs being fire and forget weapons, which means the target that you give them on drop is where they're going to go and hit. 
So I have these helicopters right here, one and two there. And those of you who have watched my lightning targeting pod guide might remember I used something called offset aim points, which kind of lets you store a target point and switch between it quickly. And I'll use that to drop the bomb, switch to the offset aim point and drop another bomb because I don't need to guide them all the way in and the JDAMs guide themselves in, they will each go to the target I gave them at the time of drop. So I'll aim at the bottom of this helicopter as I explained and hit target management switch right to go into area track and set this as SP and now press on this TGT button to go into offset waypoint 1 or OA1. Now I'll find the second helicopter right here, point at its wheels, TMS right to set the speed. And now when I go back to TGT, it will bring me to the first helicopter. And when I go to OA1, it will bring me to the second helicopter. So I'm set on TGT and let's go in. The higher and faster you fly, the longer range you'll have with JDAMs. And I'm in the zone, as you can see, 14 miles and I'm already in range. So I'll drop the first one, press that. TGT button, OA1, and drop the second bomb. I don't need to laze, I don't need to aim them or anything like that. They're gonna go to where I told them to. It's gonna take the JDAMs quite a bit of time to get there because it's a quite a nice range for a bomb that isn't really a glide bomb or anything like that. Looking at these JDAMs, you can see that it's coming at quite a shallow angle, as I said, it to 45 degrees. Let's look at both of these helicopters. One hit. And second hit. On the second helicopter, it got damaged, but you can see that the JDAM slightly missed, which can happen with JDAMs. They're not as accurate as laser guided bombs, but nine times out of 10, they're very, very accurate. As usual, I suggest going out of the target at least 10 to 15 miles out before turning back in. That will give you more time to adjust yourself before going for the next drop. Let's find a new target. And these megs look nice. Aim below it. Target management switch right to set a speed and we're good to go. With this drop, I'll set the profile to profile 2 so we get that 90 degrees impact angle. The bomb should impact at a completely vertical angle. And because I'm set to this very, very steep impact angle, I'm actually going to wait until I'm deeper inside the drop zone before I release the bomb. I'm technically in range right now, but if I release it now, it will not be able to get to that steep angle. Right, halfway in, I hope this is good, and drop. The radio call for dropping JDAMs, just like any smart bomb, is Paveway. After dropping a JDAM, you're actually getting a uh, time to impact countdown on the bottom right of the HUD. As you can see right now, it's at 20, 19, 18, it goes down. It's an estimated impact time, so don't count on it to be exact. Looking at this JDAM, you can see it's coming at a basically vertical angle. Shack, And I have one last JDAM, so I'll go drop it on another training target. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. JDAMs are among my favorite weapons in DCS, and I'm sure they'll quickly become so for you too. Thank you so much for watching. Land safely.